So today we're going to look at how we use Wanomics to uh, take our uh, list of uh, proteins quantified down to a smaller critical list. Um, what I'm showing on screen right now is a heat map for um, proteomics, also a similar view to DIA results. This lists out all the proteins inside of our filters and how they are up and down expressed according to this color change. This same area um, has a view to it that helps to associate uh, found proteins against kind of structure and function. This is useful. And as you can see, it's still a large number of, of items to kind of look through. Uh, a valuable view, but now let's use the product to take uh, this list of actors down to an even smaller set using some, some statistics tools. For that, I'll show you what we're aiming for. So this is a, a, a force-directed map showing proteins um, that are the big balls um, and uh, structure of function, which are the squares. And this is a much tighter view, fewer actors, um, information on the proteins available from a click and information about functions and structures available from a click on the square. OK, so to get to this, we're going to head towards marker view. And this is our statistics package that's available inside of uh, OneOmics on the cloud. And what we'll do is we'll create a new session, a full change based session. Here I'll say. Our control is K, um, next step, and I'll look for uh, things that have kind of a, a larger full change. Uh, what's useful in this top corner shows you the number of uh, proteins left from the larger cohort. So of 722 possible things, these filters allow us to constrain the view. Um, as a, for instance, if I increase this to 80, you'll see this even smaller subset of uh, proteins. Go ahead and start that session. Bonomics is uh, computing the results and showing me uh, some kind of key metrics. Uh, just to explain a few things, intersection um, plots the intersection between two different statistical methods used to um, score the data. Um, and uh, the greater the intersection, the you know more confident we feel in the approach. And in this case, a uh, good degree of inter overlap. I'll pick uh, the PCA, PCVG uh, method and look at um, uh, various groups. Clicking through will show you uh, different groups and how they perform. Um, the grouping is based on how similarly each of the proteins um, is uh, up and down expressed across the different groups. So you notice everything in group zero looks roughly the same in how it performs, D versus K, I versus K, and N versus K. Um, I'll skip down to something that has a smaller set of uh, proteins. And uh, just kind of looking around. This one looks interesting because it has a kind of an interesting pattern. Uh, I noticed there's some. Uh, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call all of these um, proteins as behaving all that similarly. So that I find this kind of an interesting group. I'm curious about what I'll see, and so I'm going to hit this button called View Enrichments. This is going to take me to that force directed map we saw earlier. I changed the filter a little bit, so we might see a slightly different view. Similar looking. OK, so here is um, that same uh, alpha synuclein protein we looked at before. And uh, here we have a couple of things, structure and function. So here we can uh, discover uh, what might be interesting to look deeper, more closely at in the next step 
after we're finished with one onyx. All right, so uh, this is a, a, a quick look at how to use some of the um, um, filtering and stats tools inside of one omics to kind of take a large candidate list and kind of filter it down to really interesting um, next steps. All right, thanks very much.